cannot change your misery unless you realise it's from your thinking and you are the thinker. I can do it. I put me first. I have it already. I will achieve it. Everyone else is taken. So be yourself. Everyone else. There's no need for comparison. If you're going to compare to anything, compare to yourself this week compared to last week. That's it. Or today compared to yesterday. And this, I say it all the time, realise that you're made of love and notice when you think yourself away from that place of self-care and self-love. We have well-being, we have thinking, we have misery. You think yourself away from well-being. If you stop thinking, you get self-love. You get well-being. You're not broken, you're not lacking. There's nothing wrong. The worst thing you can do is tell people you're okay and you're not okay. That's a lot of tension, that's a lot of stress, that's a lot of anxiety. But if you are okay, and I can tell you now, I am okay. Authentically true, I am okay. I don't look for things outside of myself to be more okay. It's a great starting point. About self-care and self-love, I just think they're very relevant. Owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we'll ever do. Owning our story and loving ourselves. Remember the stories, the scary part of it now is made up. But if you do that, you will have an amazing life. You will be golden. You're not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. It's not selfish to put yourself first. It is selfish to neglect yourself. And we do that by putting other people first. Put yourself first, you do more for other people. You show up better in the world. So make yourself a priority once in a while. It's not selfish, it's necessary. And the more we love ourselves, the more we blossom into the greatest versions of ourselves. And you need love and connection to do that. You know, the, you become the worst, the worst version of yourself if you just do it without checking the ec ecological connection with other people and love and connection and family and friends. But the more you show up from loving for yourself, the better everybody is. This is good stuff. People don't realise this. I didn't realise this. It kept me stuck. Your greatest responsibility is to love yourself and to know you are enough. They're just words. But it's only the thinking that takes you away from this. Because I remember when I used to tell people, just be quiet with yourself and sit with your feelings and they won't hurt you. But when you're stuck up in your head with thousands of thoughts telling you all them things that are in the bubble, I'm not good enough, you know, I'm this, that and the other. So when clarity and purity of thought are present, you call that wisdom if you want, common sense, the answer you seek will present itself. For what you seek is with you and has been with you always. I'm here to point you to that. You're looking the wrong way if you're looking outside of yourself. You need to look inside yourself at where there is no thought. And that creates a quiet mind. I defrag my brain 80%. I sometimes forget my own name. And when you can have that quiet mind, you can it leads you to your own insight. And the only thing that will change you today or the next day or next Monday or whatever this, the penny drops from the last straw that broke the camel's back, the penny drops. If it leads to your own insight, you will see the world differently. It's gratitude. How so? Being grateful for stuff. 
And if you're grateful, think about it now. There's no scary thoughts. You're sitting in your heart space with this lovely feeling and you're just grateful that you're breathing. You're grateful that you've got things to do in life. And it is like cutting a parachute off your back and allows you to move forward quicker. And if you show up with kindness, compassion and gratitude for everything, I, I know it's going to freak you out. I got up this morning, I looked out my kitchen window and I seen a little bird flying around. There seems to be quite a few in my garden, which is, I'm gutted because there's not normally any, any little tiny birds. And, I, and this bird flew across and I couldn't quite see it. I hadn't, so my eyes hadn't woken up properly. And I was hoping it wasn't just a sparrow, although I've got nothing against sparrows, but they, you know, and they get bad press. And I was hoping it was a robin. I was that present and I just watched it until it turned round and showed me that it was a robin. And I got super excited about it because I seen a bird with a, with a red breast. It was mad, isn't it? But it made me think, what could you be grateful about that? Well, I'm grateful my eyesight's good enough to see it 20 meters away. I'm grateful that there's still birds flying about and I'm grateful that it was light enough to see it. And I'm grateful that it looks like springs on its way because it's starting to already, this is the lockdown part was a bit hard work, the darkness, but it sort of missed the dark nights and the dark mornings. Didn't really see them. So now spring's here. How, and I had a coffee. All that, all that gratitude is just in that. We don't have to bungee jump. We don't have to jump out of a plane. We don't have to have sail down a cliff. Some of them things I want to do, but I am so grateful. For, I like to say nature, the one thing that, that nature gives you that your thinking can, it gives you them connected feelings, doesn't it? It's like, you know, the oxytocin you get from being in love with yourself and being in love with someone else. It's a lovely place to be.